everybody and welcome to TV8's 2007 and 2008 High School Basketball Coaches Show. My name is Mike Martin. Joining me as usual is Chris Wright, the coach. Uh, Chris, we got an interesting lineup tonight. Who are our coaches? Well, it's very nice that we have all the uh, coaches from Sheboygan here. We're going to have Coach Tom Desotel, who's plus 30 years of coaching, along with Tim Schultz from Sheboygan South. Uh, Brett Flipsies at Sheboygan Christian, he's coming in, and Todd Decker uh, from Sheboygan Lutheran. Now, part of our show, and you're going to have to wait till the end, people, before we do this, but we're going to recap the Fox River Valley and make our predictions for the Fox River Valley and the Central Lakeshore Conference. And then we're also going to talk about some key uh, TV8 matchups, which should be pretty interesting. Yeah, it's hard to believe football's closing up, the uh, college game's going, and uh already on TV, so I'm kind of excited for high school basketball to get started. I don't know started. about you, but I'm hoping for a lot better success than we had in the football <laughs> season. It was a long season for football, and we're hoping for a lot better season in basketball. I think we will have a good season, and uh, it's always exciting to, you know, with the new conference, especially for the Sheboygan North and South, but uh, it'll be a very exciting just basketball in general. All right, with that, we're going to step out, and when we come back, Chris will be talking with Tim Schultz from Sheboygan South. Back, I'm with Sheboygan South head coach Tim Schultz. Tim, uh, you have a new conference this season. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, definitely the um, level of play in the conference I think is going to go up drastically. Um, not to say it wasn't bad before, but four teams that we added from the Bay Conference, um, three of them are I think pretty traditionally pretty strong, and a fourth one that uh, you know really adds depth. That this might be, if you look overall in the conference, might be one of the deepest in most talented conferences now in the state. Um, with this change, you seem to have to play a lot of games on Saturdays. Yeah, it's not the most ideal thing. Um, I would rather stick to the traditional Tuesday, Friday. Uh, but you know, some of those games you throw in there, um, especially North, North game, which is perfect for a Saturday for everyone involved. And um, Ashwaubenon, I think, is another one. Um, you know, the two really good teams, two really good games. Um, it's not the most ideal thing breaking up a weekend, um, but, you know, you play it as they schedule it, I guess. Let's talk about that north-south game. For, as you said, forever it's been, seems like it's been on a Friday or Saturday night. People in Sheboygan have looked forward to this event. Uh, the new conference have decided, let's move it to a Tuesday mm -hmm. and right away in December. Yeah, I don't think that's the best, but you know, there's nothing that we can do about it. Uh, we can next time when they go through the scheduling, I think we'd both Tom and I and everyone involved would rather have both of them on a Saturday. But set it up for a Tuesday, I guess. Uh, you know, new conference, new traditions, new everything. Um, but I, I'd much rather play on Saturdays. Something I liked about it too is we played the freshman games early in the morning. Mm -hmm. We had the JV games in the afternoon, and then that right. it was kind of a it's something that for basketball people in Sheboygan, there's something they always look forward to, and you've kind of lost that. Right. Yeah, you end up now we're playing the freshman and JV games uh, the Saturday uh, for the Tuesday night game the Saturday before. So it does lose a little bit of something where you could kind of hang out all day and watch basketball. That's good, at least that the girls can still play too. That's, that's a positive thing. Uh, Coach, let's talk a little bit about your program. Last couple years, uh, one thing I've seen is you guys have lost a lot of close games, and, uh, you know, it just seems... Your kids are always right there. You know, what do your kids have to do to get over the top this season? I think it's uh, more mental than anything. I think maybe in the past, um, you're always kind of hoping you're going to win, thinking you might have a chance to win, um, and instead of just going in and saying we are going to win. And a lot of the close games that we lost, there were uh, maybe turnovers or things that we did um, that might have cost us the game and maybe handed the game to the other team. And I think it's just a learning curve that you go through um, when you're trying to build up a program. And these guys right now, I think they're at the point that they, they want to win. They know they can play against other teams. They know they can play against very good teams. We played a lot in the offseason against some of the you know, better programs around the state, and they have a lot of confidence right now. And hopefully um, the confidence that they had from the offseason carries over into the season. With that, uh, you have a lot of athletes this year. You're just... You're a team that could really run up and down the floor, and I, th I think you have a lot of gifted kids over there. Yeah, I, the, these guys are, um, you know, they play multiple sports, a lot of them. Um, and the guys that don't, they're very athletic, very much into basketball. Um, and it gives me a lot of options on who to play. You know, uh, guys get tired, we can uh, burn them out a little bit, and they get tired, you know, you bring somebody else in, you, can, you got a lot, of, a lot of replaceable parts during the course of a game. Um, the key with that, though, is that you know everyone comes in and that they're playing at a high level, 
Um, having athletes is great. You still got to be able to defend. You still got to rebound. You still got to put points on the board, and, you know, and stop the other team from scoring points. But athletes is a, a nice problem to have. Scoring shouldn't be a problem either. You got a lot of points coming mm -hmm. back. Yeah, we we do. We do have a lot of points. And last year, I think we averaged about 65 points a game, um, and that's an area I'd like to be around, if not higher. Uh, but again, we have to go back to the defensive end. We got to stop the other teams from scoring, and that's something that I think is a work in progress. Uh, we have to be smarter. Um, have to play more on a team concept, and, and hopefully, the, what I've seen so far early on um, in practice and everything, that guys are guys are doing that. Well, you got Hemstein back, Peter Wolf, uh, some other kids that can score for you. Would you like to name some of them? Um, well, we, Hemsing, Peter Wolf, um, you have T.J. Crowns, uh, Jake Schwartz, Kyle Rommel. I think those are my five letter winners that are coming back, and all of those guys can put points on the board. And then that's not taken away from some other guys from the JVs as well. But you have to rely on those five letter winners that bring the experience at the varsity level. And some of them, you know, like Peter Wolf, uh, he's working on basically his you know, third year of varsity. And those guys have to step up and be leaders, um, you know, on both ends of the floor. I think you have a nice combination of, like you said, you had a good JV program too mm -hmm. last year. And uh, that with those kids you have, I would have high expectations, that's for sure. Um, Ash Wabadon, we know they're going to be real good. And... Uh, Looking at your division, playing with the Pier and Manitowoc and North and East and Preble, I think it's going to be very competitive. I think it's wide open. I think all of these teams, actually, when you look at it athletically and what they bring um, size-wise, um, everyone is athletic. Everyone has depth. Uh, styles of play are very similar. Uh, and it's one of those things where I think across the board in the conference, not only on our side of the division, but the other side, you're going to have to come to play every single night. There is not a time when you're going to be able to, or the players are going to have a chance to sit back and go, oh, this is going to be an easy one. You know, as coaches, we never do that. It's always a challenge. Um, but it's something that we're going to have to, you know, really work the guys in practice and let them know that, you know, there is nothing easy coming this way at all in this conference. Well, thanks so much for coming in. We look forward to seeing you. We have you right away on the 30th. So right. uh, when I return, I'll have Coach Todd Decker from Boyden Media. I'm back here with Coach Decker from Sheboygan uh, Lutheran. Coach, you've been doing this a long time now. Yes, I have been. It's still enjoyable, and uh, I love what I do, and I like the, where I'm at, and things are going well, so I'm happy to still be part of it. Now, lots of changes have, have taken place in high school basketball since you first started at Sheboygan North. Um, how have you adapted or some of the things that you've seen since way back in the 80s? Well, I think that uh, the type of player with basketball being almost an all-around year sport, that's been a little bit different than when I first started out. Uh, I, was, I think basketball is a little bit more seasonal. Uh, now I think uh, to develop a program, you got to try to get these guys in some summer leagues, some summer tournaments, and I think that's a, a big difference. Uh, I noticed that the younger level, there's more kids playing, and that's a good and bad thing, I think, but uh, I, I just think basketball has become a really big sport and almost an all-year-round sport, and uh, there's, there's some pluses and some minuses, but I think those are the, some of the things that are a little bit different. I think AAU for youth and things and select sort of teams have kind of contributed to that as well? Right, I think um, those outside, outside influences have made basketball for high school a little bit different and being a part of it myself with my family, uh, it, it is a strong component of basketball nowadays and uh, sometimes that AAU tag sometimes can hurt a little bit but it helps the players and it, and it definitely helps the coaches and make basketball a little bit better in Wisconsin throughout all areas. Speaking of your coach, of coaches, uh, your staff's been around quite a while, and consistency's probably helped your program and helped you know to be the successful team that it's been. Oh, without a doubt, um, we've had John Irish, our JV coach. Uh, he's now going on sixth or seventh year. Um, Mike Theobald, my assistant coach, has been with me since day one. Uh, we just had a new addition to our freshman coach. Uh, he was our assistant coach, and now he's our freshman coach, uh, James Leipom. These guys, uh, those two guys have played for me and now coaches, and that's kind of an honor for me. I feel uh, very good that they want to come back and help the program. But being, we've been real stable in that area. Uh, the terminology, the drills uh, really helps, especially with the WIA only giving us a few days before we can get 
uh, before a game, we got to have a lot of our stuff in. And with the terminology that we have, it's great to have assistant coaches have been loyal and yet uh, know what's going on and what to expect. Now, the last few years, your program has lost a lot of good players to graduation. Uh, for uh, outside people who have never seen Sheboygan Lutheran play before, you know, what kind of team do you, do you put on the floor? Uh, we run, uh, really, I think we're, we're proud of the sets that we run um, and our play selection. We're athletic, especially this year we'll be athletic. I think that's going to be a plus for us. We have a little bit of youth coming in, and, and that's, uh, that's exciting for me as a coach. Our freshman teams are going to be good. We're bringing some sophomores up. We'll switch things up on defense, which we want to keep the, uh, the opponent a little off on their, what they're going to do offensively so they don't know what to, do, what we're to expect. Uh, but those are some of the things. Get all in the break. If we don't get a couple of easy baskets, then we'll get into some of our sets and, and the CLC. Uh, the coaches know our stuff and we know their stuff, so it's a challenge that way. But uh, uh, we, we think we have an exciting program at Lutheran High, and uh, I think people would be very interested and impressed with some of the things that we're trying to do. Who are some of those players this series that you expect to contribute? Uh, Alex Maxson, uh, Taylor Post, some seniors with some experience last year. Alex is a very fine shooter and worked on it this summer. He's going to be, uh, he's very athletic and uh, Jump well, you know, up and down the court. Nick Miller, another senior, very solid, not flashy, but really can get the job done. And then we have some sophomores coming up uh, that will help us along with a uh, big junior, Parker Anderson, a six-four kid. So when we get those, some of those youth uh, coming in and these seniors with some leadership, we hope we can mix it up and be a challenge in the CLC. Well, not only your program, but I think the whole league lost a lot of players to graduation last year. Yes, um, some talented, some very good basketball players uh, are gone, and uh, I think the teams are real solid basketball teams, and, uh, but I don't know if there's a player or two that you need to plan for and scheme for and uh, make sure that they're taken care of. But then on the other hand, uh, I think from top to bottom, our conference has gotten stronger, and you better be able to play, be ready to play every night. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a big surprise. I agree. I think it's going to be very competitive on any given night. Anybody could beat anybody. Yeah, and that's a fear of a coach because sometimes kids get these ideas that some teams may not be as good, and you sit there and you can tell them and convince them, but uh, they better get out and be ready to go. We have always have some strong teams, and, but some of the teams that in the past uh, got some, has some really good coaching, and you can see it's paying off. So where do you see uh, Lutheran finishing this season? Well, uh, we'd like to compete with all the teams and be up there, and I think we can be, and we've always been in the upper part of the CLC. Um, we'd have to be on our A game every night to you know, be in a one or two spot, but we want to compete and stick in those upper you know, one to four. We think we can be, um, but boy, it's, it's going to be a tough year. Uh, with some of the changes and with the teams that are getting better and better. So we'd like to st stick in that upper half. Well, best of luck this year, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank um, you. When uh, we return, Marty will be with Coach Flipsy from Boyd and Christian. Joining me on the set is Brett Flipsy from Sheboygan County Christian. Brett, first of all, thanks a lot for stopping in. I really appreciate it. No problem. Let's talk a little bit about last year. It was a great season last year. You went 20 and three, I believe, and 14 and two in conference, and you made it to sectionals against Randolph, the state champion team. Uh, talk a little bit about last year and how that success from last season might play into this season. Well, last year was a lot of fun. Um, we were we were a squad with nine seniors from last year. Um, like you said, we were 20 and three. Uh, we were big. Uh, every program needs success. To build off of and I think last year was one of those seasons where we can build for the future you know all the young kids in our program get to see and try to try to emulate those kids and I think that was that was one of our biggest positives from last year is that we have a lot of kids that are really inter interested in basketball because of last year's team you mentioned uh, before we went on the air that uh, you have a Meerdink and a Veldkamp who graduated last year very good players on your squad Yet you got a Meerdink and a Veldkamp coming in. I would think you know the viewing their brothers last year certainly would play in a little bit to their wanting to be successful this season. Yeah, it never hurts to have success from, um, from your brothers, and getting the younger brothers to play 
you always look at it and you see the youngest brothers always seem to be the best because they get to emulate what their older brothers did and they don't get to make the mistakes that their older brothers did. Um, so we have uh, uh, two sophomores coming up that are moving up, both um, Veldkamp and, and uh, Meerdings. Uh, so it'll be fun to, I get to, to yell out that name again for the next three years. <laughs> They did a study a number of years ago, and, and I think you'll like this. They, they found out in the NFL that the top linebackers, most of them were the second sibling in, in a family, you know, because they always had to fight for things and that. And I don't know if these kids coming up as sophomores are second siblings in their families, but like you'd mentioned, you know, if they're coming off of what their brothers did, you know, hopefully that'll pay dividends and, you know, they'll have to fight a little harder. Yeah. They, uh, they have a, a good group to emulate. I mean... You know, Tyler and John from last year's team uh, were very solid basketball players. And both of them have gone on to play sports in college. So, I mean, the younger brothers are going to have to fight. Yeah, they will. Uh, when we did your game and uh, Chris interviewed uh, Tyler uh, after the game, I was very impressed with his demeanor. I mean, he really seemed like a solid citizen. Oh, yeah, ad absolutely. Absolutely. Tyler Veldkamp last year was your go-to guy, I would think. You know, he's high scorer and, and uh, was a guy you could look to when you needed uh, big points. Who's going to take over that role this year? We're going to um, add by subtraction this year. Uh, we're not going to. We are unable to go to have one go-to guy. Um, we have. We're going to be a fairly deep team, um, and it's going to be whoever shows me who has the hot hand is the one we're going to go to. Uh, this is a group that, um, just like the younger brother situation, we're going to have to fight for every game that we play. We're not as tall as we were last year, and uh, there's going to be whoever steps up gets the ball. Now, I've, I've heard coaches talk about this. They say you want to have that go-to guy. You've got to have that one guy that people can really depend on. If you were, you know, Grant, you don't, have a, you don't have a choice this year because it's just the way the team is going to be. But if you had your choice, would you rather have a guy that you can go to or, or would you rather do the addition by subtraction? Well, the way that we've, that we've always played, we've never featured one guy. Um, our philosophy at, at Sheboygan Christian is that the best players will find ways to score. Uh, you hardly ever see at our school someone averaging 30 points a game because our philosophy is if that kid ever gets hurt, where is your program? You know, so we, we try to, to go after a team aspect. And so you'd love to have someone good enough to be a go-to guy. Uh, but we always, we always try to teach team first. You mentioned a little bit about the, uh, you know, not being as tall as last year, so the, the rebounding and those kinds of things are going to change a little bit. But uh, you do have one uh, underclassman. Well, he's not an underclassman now, but coming back, because you said you had met, lost nine seniors, and he's going to be a point guard. Talk about that kid a little bit. Uh, Nate Klopatic is our only returning starter from last year's team. Um, Nate is uh, maybe stretching at 5'10", uh, so losing you know, three guys at 6'6 six, six or bigger last year, he's not going to take over a rebounding role. But um, he, he provides a leadership role in this team that um, he was our glue last year already. And this year, you know, I just see him just growing into that role even further. Let's talk a little bit about the conference this year. Uh, Oostberg lost a lot from last year. Andrew Zimmerman was arguably the best player in the conference. And uh, how do you see that playing out? How do you see your team playing out in conference play? Well, I think you've, you've still got to say Oostberg is going to be the team to beat. Um, for years now, they're the team that, that um, stepped up and was you know, conference champs. So I'd still say they're right there. Howard's Grove has got a very deep team. Uh, Cedar Grove uh, is going to be the big team this year. Um, don't look past Elkhart Lake, Ozaki. I think the conference is, is really stepped up. Um, you don't have the star pay players like we did last year, mm -hmm. um, but the, every team that you're going to see in the, in the CLC this year is very deep. Um, and, you know, Christian Wolf is, is probably arguably the guy this year. Mm -hmm. so, in the conference, right? In the conference, yeah. And that's who you open up against, too, by the way. Yes. Uh, Brett, I want to thank you for stopping in. And uh, when we come back, I'll have Coach Tom Desitel from Sheboygan North. Uh, longtime head coach at Sheboygan North, Tom Desitel. Tom, thanks a lot for stopping in. Uh, last year uh, was an interesting kind of a season. You know, you had a really great start. You ran off eight in a row in the early portion of the season. Then you ran into a little bit of a tough spell. Uh, I think it was going four and seven. But then you came on really strong towards the end and had a great tournament run. Well, we, we certainly finished strong. And uh, 
Uh, we had our ups and downs last year, as you will, when you have underclassmen, and uh, this year we've got a lot of them back. How do you think your strong finish from last year will play into this year? Well, I'm sure the experience in the regional, uh, winning the regional tournament, and then uh, competing in the sectional, winning a game at sectional, and then playing for the right to go to Madison can only help uh, the kids that were there. Um, fortunately, or unfortunately for then, was we lost to the eventual state champion, and we weren't really in that game. If anybody went to the game, uh, they were a very, very good team. I think our juniors came away, and uh, sophomore Nolan Free came away with a determination of what needs to be done. Uh, we've been there before, and frankly, that's been the big surprise of practice so far. You don't have to say too much about let's get after it or things like that. The seniors are pretty much taking over, and we've got eight of them that are strong uh, ball players. We've got an all-conference player uh, that's only a junior, Nolan Free, so we've got some experience. T.J. Kellner has been an uh, offensive force for the last couple of years for your, for your squad, and uh, uh, he received good contributions from uh, some of the seniors that are gone now. Derek Diesing stands out in my mind. Who else this year is going to help contribute to the scoring punch, not that you have to lay it all on TJ's shoulders? Well, we have four players who started um, the better part of the season last year returning. Uh, Andy Poles, Tim Schwer, um, uh, Tom Eirich, and TJ Kellner. Um, but Nolan Free came off the bench, never started a game last year, made the conference all-defensive team. It was second team all-conference. There's five pretty good ball players. Now, um, I think if we look for scorers that weren't mentioned in those five, we've got kids like Tom Olson that can, can shoot the ball and that sort of thing too. Tom Eirich was a real force in the middle for you last year, and uh, the thing that I think was a, hurt you was that when he wasn't on the floor, you got noticeably smaller. Uh, Stockdale is a kid that uh, I know didn't get much of an opportunity to play last year. Uh, how does he look in terms of helping out in the middle? Dan's a bit away from where he wants to be right now, even though he's 6'8", and he's relatively healthy. Played some football for us this year. He started mm -hmm. uh, for the football squad and picked up some much-needed game experience. But when you miss an entire year with an ACL and don't get a chance to practice your basketball skills, that sets you back. But all in all, um, he's still 6'8". One of the things that you know, probably changes here, I guess, is Nolan Free, you'd mentioned him. He was your sixth man last year and was just a dynamite player. And uh, does he, do you look for him now to go into the starting lineup or are you going to keep bringing him off the bench? We can't keep Nolan on the bench. Um, in fact, last year, by the, um, after the first few games of the year, when he went in, he never went out. And... Uh, uh, that's the, the type of, of athlete Nolan was. Now, <clears throat> right now, he's going to be a starter, and uh, he's, he's tough to... We suffer when he's not in the ball game. He's one of our best defensive players, without a doubt. Ash Wabanon looks to have a really good team. Uh, how do you see the conference playing out? Well, Ash Wabanon's in the opposite division. Now, there's two divisions in basketball. And our division is just... Uh, Matt, M Mark Miller, who writes the basketball yearbook, said, Coach, this division is top heavy, your division is top heavy, and uh, I, I mean, there's, there's just some awesome teams. And you don't have to look far to find Manitowoc and South, and then you pair those up with uh, the De Pires of the world, uh, uh, Preble and Green Bay East. That's, it's a tough, tough division. Last question for you, Coach. You open on uh, Tuesday, December 4th against South. And I don't know if that's your first game, but uh, what are your thoughts about playing that North-South game on a Tuesday night versus a Saturday like has been the case the last few years? Uh, if we would have put it on a Saturday this year, we would have been at a big uh, disadvantage. Next year, we have to take a look at the same situation. Uh, you can't put one team uh, at a disadvantage with the rest of the conference uh, um, by, by doing it that way. You kind of have to play it as is scheduled, and that's what we're trying to do. Now, next year, we're going to take a look at the situation with all four coaches involved and see what happens. Coach, I want to thank you for uh, stopping in and uh, wish you all the best of luck this year. Uh, when we return, Chris and I will wrap up today's, today's program.
Welcome back, everybody. First of all, I want to thank all the coaches for giving of their time to come in and, and speak with us and uh, add to the program. It's a really a great thing that they do that, Chris. Yes, it is, and they are in the middle of their you know practice sessions, and you know it's just their second week of practice, so they, they got a lot of stuff to put in, and the games are going to be starting soon. Uh, we have a great schedule coming up uh, for high school basketball. Why don't we talk a little bit about the key games that are coming up on our uh, schedule? Well, what's really shocking is that the North-South games are real early in the season this year, so we'll have them as usual. I think the um, other funny thing about it is, you know, we're used to always doing those on a Saturday, and the first one is going to be on a Tuesday night. Yeah, the first one will be on a Tuesday. And then, uh, of course, we have our traditional Lutheran and, and uh, Sheboygan Christian, as you said, the Holy War at the shore. But, uh, it wasn't one, me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think one, one fun team to watch this year would be Ashwaubenon. Ashwaubenon comes in from the, uh, the former Bay and now joins the new conference, and I believe they're going to be ranked in the top five in state, and they have to take both their trips to Sheboygan this year, and so I'm glad that we have them on, on the slate. They'll be exciting. But, of course, the Manitowoc game will be good with uh, the Zastro boy who's got some home roots here in Sheboygan. So yeah, that's, that's our first game, actually, so that, November 30th. Yeah, so that's always nice to have some of that in there. So those Manitowoc games are, are fun, and Ashwaubenon will be fun, and uh, like I said, the old traditional games are, are always good, too. Let's talk about the two conferences that we'll be covering, the uh, Fox River Classic Conference and the Central Lakeshore Conference. Let's start with Central Lakeshore. Uh, seems like every year, Oostburg always seems to be at the top. Now, they lost a lot of players from last year. Yes, they, I think the whole conference lost a lot of players this year, but you know, Oostburg's JVs were really good last year, and I think Sheboygan Christian had some pretty good JV players as well, but, but Oostburg's always tough to pick against, so I gotta go with, with Coach Brunig out there at Oostburg. I think I'll go with you on that, too. Let's talk about the Fox River Classic Conference. I think in the opening I may have said it wrong, but uh, Ashwaubenon looks like the real deal. And I know North has a nice team coming back. They've got those three sophomores that started. Uh, I don't necessarily mean they started as sophomores, but they were on the team and played a lot, and uh, they've got to be a force in there, too. Right, and with there's two divisions this year. Um, Ashwaubenon will be in the other division, and, and uh, Sheboygan North of South will be in a separate division. They get to play everybody in their league division once and everybody twice excuse me and everybody in the other division once and I really believe that it's going to be real close especially in the division that Sheboygan North and South is anybody can pick off anybody at any given time I North I know North was picked to win it in in the book or the as we call the basketball bible that Mark Miller who used to work for the press does um, I'll take North but I don't think it's going to be easy I think there's going to be some tough teams South could, could easily get it Mantua could get it um, I don't think it's going to be as, as easy on this side as it will be for Ashwaubenon on the other side. Now, are they splitting up the conference, like you mentioned, just for scheduling purposes? Correct. Or will not be a playoff no, they're between just playing, the two divisions? Right. They're just playing strictly, uh, you know, you play De Pere and Manitowoc and Preble and East and North and South. That's one division. And so they'll play each other twice, and then you have one crossover game. Let me ask you this, Chris. Between the two divisions, which one do you think is the harder one? Well, I think the harder one, if you want to win your league, will be the one with North and South, but Ashwaubenon is really, really good, so, you know, it's... And on the way, they could kind of breeze through there. Correct. I think they'll have a little easier route on that side. Bayport will be okay and things like that, but uh, another thing we should watch in our division will be De Pere, and uh, they'll be okay. Well, that being said, then I'm going to pick Ashwaubenon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's going to do it for our show. Chris, I want to thank you for coming in and uh, doing it, and I uh, look forward to doing the games with you this year. We want to thank our viewers for watching, and again, I want to thank the coaches for uh, chiming in and uh, adding to the program the way they do. And uh, that's going to be it for our show. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you down the road.